We're up. What's happening? We are here. Cyber Barfly is going down tonight for the first time ever. Um, some weird times going on right now, guys. And uh, we are forced to adapt, and we are adapting, and uh, we're bringing you what you want. So tonight we're going to tie a bunch of flies. So I'm going to go over the Swing and D series of flies. Um, flies that I rely on quite often for my smallmouth pursuits around here. Flies we designed to um, work on our rivers. So I'm going to give you guys the full rundown tonight. We're going to go through uh, the smallest version, the, the Finesse D. We're going to hop into the, the 2.0, and then we'll tie the, the D45 as well. Uh, Sleddy's standing by here. Rocky's running the cameras. If you have questions, I believe you can ask away. And Corey's here. He's going to type in the answer. So uh, we'll, we'll, to the best of our knowledge, we'll answer your questions and try to keep everybody on track. A uh, little bit about the Swing and D. The Swing and D uh, has been around for going on nine, ten years now. Uh, it originally started as a wedge-headed fly that we took a, a, a piece of foam, a block foam, and we shaped it with a wedge. And uh, that's kind of where it all started. It originally started as a fly called the Meat Whip. And uh, we had some pretty good success with it, but we, we knew right away that, um, that that fly had a lot of uh, room for improvement. Uh, so we went from that, that wedge head and kind of what we had behind the wedge head and look no further than Larry Dahlberg's head shape that he used on the Dahlberg Diver. And once we got to that point in the fly, we established uh, the movement of the fly that we, we liked. Uh, we, we kept most of the rear end of the fly the same, but eventually tweaked some things, uh, learned more and more about the, the head shape and what kind of drove the train, so to speak. Uh, and we'll talk more on that today. But uh, the head shape that uh, Larry originally shaped with deer hair, uh, being this, this style head here, where you have a flared uh, collar to it. Um, and depending on where you source your heads and what you get per pack, they're gonna have a different shape. Some are gonna be short and stubby with a big collar. Some are gonna be elongated uh, with a collar. But when you play with these things and, and fish them and, and kind of get your, your, um, your base right, they'll eventually, You'll, you'll establish a style in which they swim. And just to kind of cut your learning curve down a little bit, um, the pointier the nose, the longer the foam, uh, the bigger the collar, the more erratic it's going to be. Um, you can actually get a true swim out of it. If it's short and stubby, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit of a wider wobble. Whereas the really, really thin ones with the small collars, they're going to be a, a tighter uh, type movement to them. And again, you're going to have to play with it and, and see it for yourself and, and see it to believe, so to speak. But, uh, you know, that's what drives the train. Um, uh, we've experimented doing it with deer hair. Uh, but what you get with deer hair is you get passed through and, and the durability is an issue. So if you're going to spend 20, 25, 30, 40 minutes tying a fly, the, the, the foam, uh, will, will get you once you kind of establish what it's supposed to look like and the shape you're looking for, it's way more consistent. So, um, these heads are by Rainey's. There are imitations out there. Um, but what you're going to find is the, the ones that are out there that aren't made by Rainey's. There's uh, a lot of variation to them and inconsistencies, uh, which just drive, drive you nuts. Um, so the Rainey's size small, and in size medium, medium in some cases uh, are the ones you're looking for and the one you're, you're going to want to source and, and to tie this with. Okay, so uh, I'm sure most of you guys checked out Facebook this morning to see what, what you needed if you want to tie along. We understand it's, it's short notice and, uh, you know, you might not tie along with us, but I think if you just hang out for a couple hours and listen, I think you're going to get uh, a lot of information out of this that will be uh, great for your your spring season coming up. Uh, this this fly tends to the, these patterns tend to really shine uh, about this time of year as the water's warming. 
Right now on our local rivers, we're looking at 38 degree water temps all the way up to 42 degree water temps. So uh, they're just starting to get on the swim fly bite. Uh, up until this point, did a lot of uh, fishing with uh, circus peanut variations, uh, sculpins, crayfish, um, leeches, that kind of stuff. But uh, the, the time of year that really gets us excited and what we're, we're looking forward to is seeing those big eats on flies that we can see. Uh, just yesterday, we had three fish go on swim flies, and I think the boys uh, got into them today as well. So uh, we're right at that turning point, and this is a really good time to start building your arsenal. And what I hope to do for you guys tonight is, is show you not only what you can see, you know, when you're seeing these things on Instagram or Facebook or, or, or whatnot, but actually under the hood and see how we're building them and, uh, and how you can adjust different uh, keels and, and time in different ways to get them deeper um, and get them to, to, to swim different ways. Uh, the biggest thing I can tell you, and we'll, we'll talk about it as we go through this, um, one thing that this fly really did for us was it established, you know, the theory of the small mouth, the angle of approach, which we, we fish to these fish uh, at. And, um, you know, just for, for those of you out there that don't know the type of water that we are fishing, we are fishing uh, fairly small rivers. So uh, rivers that during the summer are going to run at 120, 150 CFS. And then in the springtime, we're going to run 2,000 up to the high 2,000s. So under 3,000 for the most part, but uh, at fishable levels, but uh, fairly small rivers. Um, so having said that, the flies that we're fishing, these style flies, we're not having to track them at a great distance. So these flies are, are, are placed into a zone. Uh, the guy that's on the oars, the, the rower, uh, is controlling the boat in a fashion and positioning it in a fashion that allows the the angler to fish on a downstream angle, a 45 um, or greater, even almost straight down sometimes. And you're, you're walking these flies back into the fish uh, as much as you are bringing them back to the boat. So if you don't have uh, someone that knows how to control the boat and someone that, that is, is equally participating in uh, the, the angling uh, on the oars and, and on the rod, this fly is going to be extremely difficult to fish and extremely difficult to have success with if your angling partners are not helping you out with it. Um, the, the, the rower, especially early season when the water's cold, is more important almost than the angler, if that is even uh, sounds right to you. But if you're not rowing proper, you might as well not even be out there if you're fishing this type of fly. If you, if you can't row and you can't hold the boat in position, you're better off throwing a dumbbell eyed fly any day and just slopping it around and, uh, and, and going with that route. But if you're fishing a swim fly and, and your angling partner is truly engaged, you can do some major damage with these patterns uh, when presented properly. Um, just to get it over with before we get into the tying, uh, what are we fishing this on? These, these flies are most of the time, more time than not, I would say over 95% of the time, we're fishing these flies on a scientific angler's full intermediate sonar titan. That is the line that we're going to fish early season. As the water warms, and I would say, let's say it gets over 60 degrees, 55 degrees, we'll switch over to the Sonar Titan Tropical Clear Tip. Two different differences between those two lines. The, the, the full intermediate line has a cold water uh, coating, and it also has a multi-filament core, which isn't going to tangle in, in the cold. Whereas the Titan uh, Tropical Clear Tip is going to have a monofilament core, and that's going to be absolutely terrible on a day like today or in the cold or even in the fall, but it's going to excel in the heat. So same exact taper, same exact, exact head length, um, but different uh, coating and different core. So there's two different lines that we fish. And, and the reason that we fish the intermediates is with an intermediate line, think about what I talked about with the size of the water and the distance we're gonna track the fly. With the intermediate line, you're able to fish the fly. With a sink tip, you're fishing the line. So the feel of the fly as, it, as you're stripping it and you're moving it, and it doesn't matter if you're fishing a, a dumbbell-eyed leech or you're fishing these type of swim flies, if you can feel the fly when you're stripping, um, you're gonna be at a great advantage when you're fishing for smallmouth bass over having to fish the line and the fly is just kind of coming along for the ride. So 
Um, there's a question that just popped up says, how do you fish this when you're waiting? I would say the most effective way to fish this fly while you're waiting is at a slow walk. So you're actually physically moving downstream and walking the fly back, um, and, and presenting it to the fish. That's when the water's cold. Don't get me wrong. This fly can be retrieved back to the boat, but that time of year, I mean, the, it, later in the spring when the water gets warmer, that's when that becomes more effective. But when the water's cooler, uh, you're fishing for big fish in small areas and you want to keep a fly in a zone, you're going to, you're going to fish the intermediate. You're going to fish on a 45 down and you're going to just kind of keep that fly in the zone. Usually a fly like this, it's, it's, it's meant to imitate a wounded minnow. So there's not too many smallmouth around. They're going to sit there and watch a wounded minnow flutter. Um, they're going to go and get it. So uh, usually with this fly, the, the strikes, uh, in the, in the, they're pretty quick. Um, they're not going to screw around and, and chase this fly for a long period of time. They're going to absolutely hammer it. Uh, even these big ones that are six and a half, seven and a half inches long, when a smallmouth eats it, the whole, uh, fly is in the, in their mouth. Okay. So let's start off with the finesse and, uh, Corey will answer any questions you guys have. He's uh, busy right now spinning leeches but uh just a super what i can tell you about lengths of these things right so if you guys have experimented fishing uh feather game changers and craft fur game changers and that kind of stuff what you'll find the smaller you tie them um i guess the the action in my opinion become a little less desirable i want that fly to be super erratic and move so i think some of the best swing or swimming uh, changers are, you know, four and a half to seven inches in length. Some of the smaller ones outside of those little finesse guys, it's difficult to get them to really get that crazy serpentine action like we do with the bigger ones. Same thing here. Um, the smaller uh, finesse, it's not going to have that crazy all over the place. It's going to be more of a back and forth, like a little floating wrap. Um, this one here doesn't have any type of keeling on it. But what we can do is you could wrap some some lead around there, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But this is just a really small, compact version, super effective in, in low clear water in the summer. Uh, May, this would be a good one. Anytime you're dealing around here with, with low conditions and you want to throw a streamer, this would be one that you, you, you could throw, and it would work out really good. Um, differences, it's a single hook version. We're going to start with a 15 millimeter shank. We're going to build off there. We're going to connect it to a 2.0 worm hook. I mentioned earlier that uh, that sourcing quality heads that are cut properly and, and shaped properly is has been something that's um, become harder and harder over the over the last few years. Some of the companies that were have kind of ripped off this head, their their quality has gone downhill, and we've just totally got away from using them. Uh, just because the quality is just terrible. So uh, what you want to do when you're finding going through packs of these heads that you're uh, with at our shop or your local fly shop, wherever you're, you're sourcing them, um, unpack them. Uh, it's a little Ziploc bag. Look inside. Try to find ones that are shaped properly. Once in a great while, you're going to find one that's kind of shaped weird or has some flaws in it. But um, the vast majority of the Rainey's ones are are in really good good shape and working order right out of the um, pack. Um, so here we go. Finesse D. Hope you guys are ready. Uh, let's, uh, let's whip it up. I'm using some 140 Vivas uh, power thread, I believe it's called. This stuff is the real deal. I've been a UTC user for a long time and uh, the boys have been on this Vivas for uh, about a year now. I kind of hesitated. I was going through my stash and running down my stock, but, uh, this stuff is, is lights out great stuff. So super simple. I'll kind of throw some tips and stuff at you guys along the way, ways that I make this uh, easier to tie for myself when I'm putting it together at my house. Um, little, little plug for Regal. They got this cool little, uh, new material clip thing. It's magnetic and, uh, comes in black and silver, nothing crazy, but just fits right on your Around your vise right there and that's kind of a nice thing to have when you're whipping this so let's just put down a, a thread base here 
how many times do you guys think I'm going to break my thread tonight? I am not, uh, I'm not the world champion fly tire by any means, but, uh, these flies work and happy to share with you guys a uh, little trick. So you can tie these, any of these versions using some different materials. So as you guys probably saw online uh, on the recipes Greg threw up this morning, we, we mentioned the uh, cactus chenille. So the, the hairline cactus chenille extra large comes in pearl and that's it. Looks like this. In fact, this stuff here is the chocolate's filler flash. It's exactly the same, except it comes in colors. Other options would be if you wanted more of a muted fly, you could get away with uh, the old finesse in the size large. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So if you if you fish around here and you and you know what a lot of our rivers do or some of our rivers do some of them run stained some of them run muddy some of them run crystal clear so what i found over the years is 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 some of the rivers the the fish prefer more muted um colors so i like this stuff they make it in tan they make it in clear they make it in olive it's really good when you're going for that more muted look or if you want something that that bangs and it makes a lot of flash and and whatnot the the cactus or the filler flash is great so here's a little little trick for you. Um, when you're setting your, your tail feathers, a lot of times they'll give you trouble and they'll roll uh, around the shanks. You're trying to tie a, a round stem around a round shank, um, which has some, some issues. So what you can do just to get you started, you can take some of this, this cactus or the filler flash or whatever you're using and just put a couple wraps in here. couple few and just lock that lock that in and then you'll have something for that tail to sit up against so this 15 millimeter shank is going to have two feathers it's going to have a collar of uh, hen saddle and then it's going to have a mallard flank wing or cap or whatever you want to call it so putting a little thread down, putting that in there will help your, your tails hang nice off the back. Your flies are only as good as the materials you're using. So this is the best stuff out there for tying deceiver style tails, whether you're tying a swinging D or a lefty deceiver or a, um, you know, combo hybrid clouser deceiver. This is what you want to get, American Rooster. from whiting. So the best stuff, the sharpest, this, the nicest feathers you can find. You're gonna get in here and grab a couple shorties. This is gonna be the smallest fly in the D series. Take a couple feathers. What I like to do is just match them up. Come in here and trim it. I'm going to clean some of this off. I'm just going to take that and put one down the side here. Take the other one on the other side. Tie it in. See, it's getting a little crazy, right? So you can fix that. Let's clean this up. You take a couple little grizzly feathers, run them down the side, give you a little accent. Once you get it out of here, it'll look nice and straight. A little dimension to the fly.
Okay. I'm just going to take hen saddle. Same thing here. This is going to be the best stuff you're going to be able to find anywhere. You can definitely tell when a fly has been tied with a whiting feather. They just look different. They feel different. They wrap different. A couple of these. Just going to grab by the tips again. Pull that back. Give me a nice little tie in point. Tie that in. And wrap it. You already getting harassed there, uh, Sleddy? <laughs> Take this little mallard flank, little cap this guy here. Right on the top. All right, who broke their thread? How many people broke their thread? Just whip finish, whatever you like to do. A couple half hitches and some flex. And that's good to go for me. This stuff, or solar as, solar ease, whatever you want to call it, flexible. Money. Little bodkin. Pop that out. I use the twenty five millimeter shanks. Um, for all my connections, and then I can just cut them to whatever length I need it to be. So I got a 25, pop that in there, my little tail section. I'm gonna take two ot, gamagatsu, worm. This is a three ot, I know, but this is a two. That's the, the hook, but in the two hot version. I haven't found a better hook for this front. The finesse, I've been using the two hot and the 2.0 and the standard, I've always used the two hot. When I jump up to the 45, which is a lot bigger fly, I'm gonna use the 3.0. But um, there are some other hooks on the market that are similar. A-Rex makes one, uh, I'm sure Partridge makes one, but this one has never failed me, and uh, that's what I'm rolling with. I've never had any reason to change it. I've tried different hooks, but I always end up going back to this one. So it's actually a, a conventional hook. Uh, it's got little little barbs on it for a rubber worm, but this thing is, uh, is by far the best for this. So I'm gonna lay down a thread base whenever you are glue and a shank to a hook. I, I personally have never had any of my connections fail on, on any of the flies I've tied. Uh, what I like to do is I'll just put down a little thread base where that metal is gonna touch the metal and before I glue it in. And I'm not too concerned. Um, and I've heard Blaine talk about keeping everything in line and he runs a lot of his wire and whatnot connections right off the top. I'm going to do mine off the side. 
this fly isn't meant to swim perfect. This fly is the meant to look like it's hurt. So I'm not too concerned about it if it's off a little bit and off to one side. It does not matter. I've caught thousands of fish on this fly. Um, one thing you might want to do, this, this power thread is extremely tough, but uh, every once in a while you'll nick that uh, cut you just made on the shank. So just come in with a file and just kind of clean it up a little bit, take the sharp edges off it, and that'll save you a lot of headaches when you're going to tie this thing in and snapping your thread. So just tie that in right on the side like so. And lock her in. Obviously, there's no hook on the on the rear shank, but when you get into the 2.0 and the 45, you're gonna wanna take a little care there. We all use this. It's killer. A little super glue. Try not to drop it down into the barrel of your bobbin. But all I'm going to do is, is get back to my cactus or my my filler or my uh, finesse, whatever you want to use. So you're just going to take a small piece of this, tie it in. Let's break your thread. Pull that back. Three, four wraps. In there, lock in the material, back wrap it a little bit, cut it off, going back into your hen. All you need is a couple, match them up. It down like so. Right in. Wrap up on top of that. This is one of the, the next part. A lot of people struggle with this, and that's tying in the rattle. So when you're using the 2.0, you want to stick with this 5 millimeter single. When we get into the big dog, the 3.0, 45, you can go with a little bit larger one with the double. So... I've heard anglers that I respect on both ends of the spectrum saying rattles don't matter, saying rattles matter. I, I definitely dig the rattle. So um, it's up to you. You can come up with whatever you want, but I like the rattle. So I'm going to come in, kind of loose wrap this a little bit, get a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter. All right, I'm going to cover it up. And then my finishing move here is to go around it and post it. And that kind of just grabs all that thread and pulls it really tight and locks that rattle in right on the top, okay? Before I go any further, again, boom, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to my Cactus or filler flash. And I'm going to, it's tacky. Wrap that right through here. Kind of grab on. Help you out. Couple up here. And done. Lock it in. 
So check out my distance here, right? If you're way up here, you're not getting that head over. So you got to leave yourself some room up there. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a collar of marabou. Come in here, grab myself a piece. Clean that up. Tie it in by the stem. Cover it all up. Careful not to nick your thread on the barbs. I'm just going to fold this back and just wrap it. If it's getting unruly on you, this is a great little tool to have on your bench. Game changers, any type of streamers, any rabbit, any of that kind of stuff. Just brush it out. I'd recommend having one with metal, steel, and then one with plastic, nylon, bristles. Wrap that in there like so. And lock her in. Okay. Next thing, I'm going to put those accent feathers down each side. A little lateral line action. Oh, you know what? Let's make let's put a little throat on this guy. Red and white's always been good to me. throat just back wrap right up on that it's all going to be covered up by that head I'll throw my accents down the side it's done I'll cut your thread and then last thing you're going to do is just put, um, you can, you can use this again. You could use mirror wrap, finesse, whatever you got handy. This is just going to kind of finish it clean. And then also give something for your super glue to sink into or soak into rather to lock the head into place. And all you're going to do is just wrap this forward. Doesn't have to look good. It's all going to get covered. Back wrap this. Boom. It's all going to get covered with super glue. Now you're going to take your head. And I'm going to look for something. So you can see here just these two these two different heads came out of the same pack. One slightly wider than the other. I want the long, skinny with the nice collar. So I'm gonna double check. You can take your your bodkin, kind of get in there and clean that out so you don't blow it out through the top. That happens every once in a while. You just want to make sure that head fits on there properly before you glue. So if you don't check, what's going to happen is you're going to go to jam it on there and it's not going to fit. And then you're going to have this head like that <laughs> and it's not going to work. So double check, make sure it fits. It fits. I'm going to take some uh, gel super glue, which looks like I don't have on my desk. 
Throw me some gel. I got some gel. There's some over there. There's some in the Sims bag for sure. There's a pack in that Sims bag right here. Got it? Cool. Just this stuff here. Gel super glue. Just put it on there. And boom, pop it out of the vise immediately. Make sure it's straight. Now you got your little wounded middle for up on the surface. Summertime, late spring, fall, low water, subtle, little killer. Any questions? Anything in there, Slutty, we need to answer? Cool. I'm looking here. Anything uh, you guys want to know about with this guy? Uh, leader wise, I'm gonna I'm gonna tie this thing. I'm gonna fish. You can fish this one uh, if you put a keel on it on a floating line. You could fish it on a floating line even without a keel. Um, but this one would be a good one to show you guys while while people are wrapping up. This would be a good one to show you how we how we keel these things. So you're just gonna take some. 025 lead. Uh, if you've ever fished with me or been on a guide trip with me in my my box that I work out of, my little go box, I have 020, 025, 030. I have one of these with me at all times in my boat. I've got a UV light that sometimes I, I'll get up under the seat of my boat and hit it with the light or or just let rely on the sun to, to uh, cure it. But uh, what you get with the with the flax is you get the ability to put it on there and then peel it off. So if you, you it doesn't behave the way you want it to behave, you can literally get in there with a fingernail or even your your nippers and start peeling the the resin off, and then you can you can unwrap the lead, uh, which makes it uh, really nice. You can change change out the the action of the the fly. So what you're going to want to do it's super simple. With a little fly like this, I wouldn't use more than six or eight wraps, but uh, you can vary the sink rate and it will change the action of the fly slightly. So you're just gonna come in here. You can do this while you're on the water. One, two, three, four, five, six. A few wraps there, just lock it in like so. Break that off. Kind of position where you want it. I usually put it on the bend. And then I'll just take my flex resin and I will cover that up. Take your bodkin if you want. All around. Hit it. And boom. I got one that kind of will hang and suspend and sink at a fairly slow rate. Cool. There's one down, two to go. So the next two, you're going to have a um, little repetition of what we've already done where you get to practice. Um, someone's asking about leader length. So if I'm fishing this on an intermediate line, chances are if I'm going to throw a fly this small, it's going to be during the period where I'm fishing um, that clear tip line. So what I'll run, uh, I'll run 30 pound down to 25, down to 20, and then I'll put my uh, tippet off of that. I am a big fan of using 16 pound. It's it's pretty rare that I'll that I use anything less than 16, uh, unless it's a late winter, early spring, ultra clear water, or uh, I'm not streamer fishing and I'm, I'm sight fishing with terrestrials and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, there's a lot of good floral carbons on the market. Uh, the stuff that I have been using for years for streamer fishing. Um, I think it's, it's unrivaled by any of the, any of the, the tippet out there right now. And that's the, the hatch red label floral carbon the stuff is just unreal. It's, it's, it wouldn't be something you want to use for nymphing or, uh, anytime where you want stretch, uh, a lot of stretch to your, to your, uh, tippet. But if you're fishing streamers, 
you're fishing around rocks, you're fishing around wood, um, you're whacking flies off of bridge pilings and, and concrete riprap and whatnot, that tippet, nothing can beat it. Um, 16 pound and 12 pound is what we rely on all the time. So um, killer fly, right line, right leader setup, and you're rocking and rolling. But 12 pound would be about as light as I'd fish this thing. Um, so finesse D. If you have questions, ask. We will answer. Okay. Moving on. Let's tie this next one with a little more muted material, and that would be the this stuff, the large finesse body chenille. What we're going to do on this back shank, this is the 2.0. So it's going to start with a 10 millimeter shank. So it's going to be the exact same thing we did off the other one, except you're not going to put that cap on there. So we'll make it a little bit harder on you guys. We're going to go to a 10, 10 mil. Okay. Just lay down a thread base. You can do that little trick I showed you with putting in a little bit of material if you want, or you can skip it. But just to keep things rolling and keep you guys on the same track, let's do this. So it's just gonna help you straighten that feather off the rear. I'm gonna show you another tip now that we're working with a little bit bigger feather that you can do. It's like a wrap and a half. Just gonna back wrap on that. It up back into our you know what let's do a fade on this one i think we're gonna do a fade let's do a fade so we'll start with a with a lime green tail and then fade it into uh into white up front all right boom one of my favorite colors fluorescent yellow another whiting color you can get the rooster to go with your hen. They match. So good stuff. I'm gonna come in here and grab a couple feathers. Get them about the same size. Match them up. Mm. I'll show you the trick. So if that's rolling on you, like it does a lot of times, grab yourself some debarbing pliers. Dr. Slick makes a cool little pair, like 10 bucks. Come in here. They're just smooth. And you just come in here and just smash those barbs down flat. Now... When you go to put it on the side, you're putting something flat up against something round. All like out just sits perfect, right? Cool. Come in here and nip these off. Since we're going a little bit louder here, let's throw a little bit into it. We have a couple strands of this grizzly, a couple strands of lateral scale. Had drawn Flashaboo, the original. Fold that over. That right down. 
got to throw our accent feathers in. Back to this. Right down the side. Right down the side. This guy's getting a little unruly on the back side. We can fix them. Clean this up and make it look really pretty. Just grab yourself some hand. Just a couple of them. Just gonna fold those fibers back. Back that off, that one. Cover this. With the flex. And the reason we went to this, where you have a free swing and tail off the back, is like I mentioned earlier, these fish, they inhale the whole thing. So if you're in there digging around with your pliers and that fish is hooked with the back hook, a lot of times what we were doing was we were damaging the tail and then the tail would fall off that back hook. And then now you have a uh, fly without a tail, which is kind of useless. So. Uh, what this did was it it uh, added to the durability of the fly, and later on we can we can walk through the original design and how it kind of morphed into what it is now. But uh, one of the fail failure points on the original fly was the tail would break off. So um, now you got 25, 30 minutes invested into a fly with no tail, and it's going into the retirement zone. So again. At the tails, I think out of the, on this fly, I think the tail is the hardest part. So getting them things straight and getting good at getting them straight and not looking all sloppy. So again, grab your 25. Personally, I don't use the 25 millimeter shank a lot within the uh, the body of my changers. Um, but what I do use the 25 for is is cutting it for connections, as I mentioned earlier. File. At home, I have a little Dremel tool that I use to clean these up, but I, they, they work a heck of a lot better than using wire. If you use wire, um, you're going to have another failure point, okay? So different hooks that work good for the rear on this guy. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the A-Rex, which is this hook here, NS172. I like using this hook uh, later in the season. When the flows are a little bit uh, uh, subdued and it's not crazy raging like it will be here the next few days, um, this hook 
if you do hook on logs and you're reefing on it, this hook will bend out, right? Another option would be the Kona, big game hunter, heavier, heavier hook, sinks fairly quickly. Um, you team them up together with a couple of them for a changer platform. It's another good one. Uh, the other one that this is just killer is the SA280 Minnow in size two and size four and even in size one for the 45. Another great uh, hook from Arex. So I'm going to take this SA280 Minnow. We're going to use that one tonight. Very similar hook to the to the Kona. This is also a great hook for doing any type of game changers because of the, the length of the shank. It just works perfect if you're going 10, 15, 15, or 10, 10, 15, 15 to the rear hook. This, uh, this is a pretty killer little setup. So again, lay down a thread base. Pop this over here on the side. I'm going to cut that back just a little bit. Want some room up front for my collar. Glue. Back to the brushable. Large finesse body chenille. Tie that in. And we'll wrap it about two thirds of the way up. Kind of brush all that out, clean it up, trim it. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of work your way down. Thanks, man. Beard me. with the magnets. Throw a little mallard flank over the top, like we did on the finesse, like so. Put that back. And flex. If you take your time and do this right, they will last. On the 2.0, we're going to go next shank is going to be a 10, and then it's going to be a 15, and then you're going to be front hook. So we're just going to repeat the same steps moving forward here. So next one will be a 10 millimeter flyman. Pop that in. Pop this in your clip. 
that all out of the way. Finesse body wrap. Wrap, wrap and a half, maybe two. And a little bit bigger as you move forward. Working your way towards the front. Sample. One. Side off. Wrap right up over top the stems. Flex. Stick your bodkin up in there like I did earlier. Keep it from sealing off the eyelet. Fifteen millimeter shank. Finesse followed by, you guessed it, hen. Pretty simple. A little more room to work with, but same thing here. Go two thirds of the way up. And working your way down into the bigger ones, towards the bottom. If you'd like to, and now would be a time to, if you're going to fade it into white, which we're going to do, start working the white into it. So I'm going to go two fluorescent yellow chartreuse and one white. Slady, what'd you call this one last year when you were fishing? What would we name it? To toxic tail, is that what it was? Toxic, toxic tail. This one's got some, got a few fish on it. A few good ones. Right, right up on it. There you go. 
more flex. Stuff kind of self levels itself if you just kind of give it a second. And back to the 25. And 2 0 worm up front. Thread base. Watch out for the little barbs. You don't break your thread. Now you do have a rear hook on this one, so a little thread base down won't kill you. Something for that glue to soak into. File. You're tying this shank in, you don't want to go too far back. If this is really far back, what's going to happen is this is going to wrap around like that and, and get you fouled. So um, the closer you put it, the better off you're going to be for the foul factor. If you're an absolutely terrible fly caster, you probably don't want to be fishing this fly. But if you do it right and you keep it somewhat tight at the rear, it will prevent this from coming around and following more times than not. Okay. So. Same stuff. Large finesse. Again, you want to be conscious of how far you start working forward you still got to fit the rattle and the head in there so at this point start thinking about where you want this to end and the hen to start and the rattle to go in so just a little bit i'm about right at the barb of that hook with my tie-in point of this stuff if i was using say filler flash which is a little bit thinner material what i would do and i'll do it on the 2.0 or I'll do it on the 45 when we tie that one. I will uh, put two pieces together and wrap and, and wrap it together to add more bulk. But uh, for this one, we're just going to go this route. I'm going to go two whites. I'm going to go one chartreuse. And if you get to the point with with your saddles and you're picked all through them and you're getting down to the end because there's way more small feathers than there are big feathers at the bottom. Don't be afraid to use schlopping on this front part. It, it works, works just fine. So, um, you know, if, if, if you've been shopping with us for a while, you probably have owned a lot of, uh, hen saddles. Some of them, all the big feathers are picked out of them and they're kind of shuffled off into a separate, De uh, desk drawer or something in your tying area bring those guys back out and you can use them for the rear ends and then uh, towards the front substitute schlopping in another one that uh, works is uh, like turkey flats you can use those for your big feather changers or variations thereof so I got two whites and a chartreuse just gonna use the whole feather here That fade going from chartreuse to white. How's Jesse doing over there? Feel free to call in if you guys uh, need any materials. You want to get ahead of the game and get stocked up on this stuff. Uh, Jesse's taking calls over on the shop side. And we're running uh, the 19% off promo until Friday at end of business. So uh, we're all locked in our houses. We're all getting by. 
I know uh, I got a lot of fly tying on my uh, on my list of things to do if we're going to be cooped up for a while. And uh, good chance to stock up the COVID nineteen percent off nineteen dollar free shipping sale through Friday. Okay, fading back to the five millimeter single bead rental by Wopsy. Put that in. Same exact technique here. Loose wraps, fairly loose wraps, getting a little bit tighter, getting a little bit tighter, getting tighter, getting tighter, getting tighter. And come underneath, post around that, choke it. That is not going to move. Take your brushable again. Cover it. Seal that up. Okay. Back to my large finesse. Tie it in. Progress my thread forward. Glue still a little bit tacky. Take advantage of that. Wrap this right over and through. Like so. Here, lock a couple in underneath and lock that all in. Back wrap right up underneath it. Cut that off. I'm going to take my marabou. A big old piece of marabou. Find me a good one. Tie it in by the stem. And wrap it. that in right up on it if you want to throw the another color in there throw a little red in kind of a clown color scheme here Keep in mind, don't get too close. We're like right at the, the limit here on that hook with the rattle and the, the room for the head to go on. Get your accent feathers. Throw a, throw a little flash in there while we're at it. Little grizzly. Little lateral scale. Fold this back. Couple accent feathers. <laughs> I'm drinking too hard. That was the question. Too hearted in the the new tall boy 
Colster by Yeti came just in time for today. Little accent feather down the side. Lock that in. Same thing on the other side. Getting unruly. And then all we need to do in this one, put in something for the glue to bite into. And we got plenty enough room up there to get our head over that. Right. Remember, you have to check your, make sure that head fits before you go and slap that thing on there. So grab a head. Go there. Take your bodkin, make sure everything's good. This is a bad one. This one doesn't have the hole. There we go. Pop that over here. The collar, having the collar flared out. Another mistake you can make is you put your glue on there and then you go to smash it on, you pinch it. And then the, your the sides get smashed down like that. It won't swim as good. You need need it to flare out. So I like to keep the glue clear of the collar. So when I'm on the water, I can push it out a little bit, and that even gives you more of a, a slashing motion to the fly. But all I'm going to do is just take some gel super glue, like we did with the first one, and go here. So between the two flies that we tied. Why would I use this one over the first one? It would simply have to do with uh, water levels, uh, water temperature, uh, clarity. When they're chasing these big ones, why would you throw that little guy? It's just so much fun seeing this thing work through the water and kick around and, and hover and ride the currents. Um, absolutely crush this thing. So this is what we're within probably, uh, if, if the weather stays consistent the way it's been, I'd say we're about two weeks away from having some really good fishing on flies like this. Usually by the first weekend in April uh, on a normal year, uh, the swim fly bite really kicks in. Uh, we're a little ahead of schedule this year, but uh, here's your, your D 2.0. Uh, differences uh, in this from the original, you're going to have that free swing and tail on a shank. Uh, you're going to have a beefed up hook. The old, the old way we did it was, you know, five, six years ago was the, the B10S in the rear. And then we ran a wire return. This is an original, original version. So you had the tail tied right onto the hook. And you had rabbit. And then you had wire and beads. What would fail was these beads would break. The wire would get kinked. The wire would rust. This thin, thin wire hook would would bend out. Um, so you know, this is the the early the early years, and you can still get this one. The thing's caught a million fish. Um, great, great pattern still works today. But if you want to spend some extra time tying it and tie something that will last, uh, this is your dude right here, the 2.0. Obviously, color scheme possibilities are endless. I uh, I like to fish a lot of whites. I like to fish um, a lot of white and grizzly combo, which uh, we can totally do on the on the last one. We can do the forty five and a uh, a white and grizzly combo. We can we can mix it up. I'll show you guys what that looks like. But this one here is 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 set to fish. Uh, I for the conditions we're currently faced with and the way the fish are eating right now, uh, I would definitely put a keel on this. But if you're fishing it in warmer water. Uh, this is uh, the way it's set right now. We'll total, totally fish just fine as the water temps rise and the fish will be a little more 
uh, aggressive to move move to the fly and uh, they're not so much in the dead dead water but they move their way to uh, closer to the seams closer to the edges um, yesterday the last two days I I was out and I, I the fish are, are already moving they're already sliding out of those really dead winter areas and and sliding over um, you know one of the questions that we we we've got here is the, the retrieve so um, you know I guess if I was gonna show you it's just gonna be you got the you got the rod it's pointed down I'm always I'm a I'm, I'm big on keeping the rod tip low to the water and it's just gonna be a real erratic so it's just a strip let it sit strip strip let it sit let it hang let it hang let it hang strip let it sit so it's it's not long strips you're not bonefish reaching for your wallet strip it's really sharp and erratic and the best anglers no matter what you're fishing for are going to vary their retrieve you're not going to get into a um, situation where you just robot fishing and just stripping 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 it's this fly imitates a wounded bait fish a wounded minnow uh, you want it to be very unpredictable um, if you've Fish for smallmouth, you, you already know that a lot of the uh, strikes on on flies like this, on, on feather game changers, on any type of game changers, any fly in general that ho hovers, uh, even things as simple as like a Sadati's kicking chicken that we used to fish back in the day before, before this was available, um, the paws. Smallmouth are suckers for eating on the paws. So uh, erratic retrieves, um, big long pauses, what this fly allows you to do is it allows you to fish around heavy cover, fish around wood. Um, if you've ever fished with with us or or had the opportunity to fish any of the rivers that we fish here in southern Michigan, um, they're just riddled with wood piles. And um, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we were faced with, you know, when we were learning about smallmouth and 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 just learning every, I mean, we learn every day we go out still to this day. But the infancy of the of Schultz Outfitters and the guide service. You know, one of the big things was we, we were hanging up on on the wood. We'd catch them, we'd catch them using dumbbell-eyed flies and, and and different techniques and patterns that were already available. Um, but we we would foul and we would hook hook wood more times than not. So um, this fly was developed out of necessity, and it's it's purpose built for our waters and our rivers uh, here in southeastern Michigan. Um, if you don't uh, put any weight on it. Uh, no keel, no nothing. Um, if you tie it right or you tie it the, um, in a way that keeps the fly as light as possible, you are able to pause the fly, especially the original version, and the fly will actually rise up, right? So if you keep your rod tip high when you're stripping, it's not the greatest thing, but you can you can literally fish the fly down behind some logs, behind some debris, lift the rod up, bring the fly up in the water column, bring it over that and then drop the rod back down and get back into your retrieve and the fly will um, not hang up. So um, swinging D 2.0, articulated tail, added to durability, um, short shank rear hook, could be a SA 280 minnow, could be a owner mosquito, could be a Arex 172, um, I vary the back hook depending on what mood I'm in and what I'm trying to accomplish, but I always keep that front hook consistent and it's always a Gamagatsu two watt worm when I'm tying the, the six and a half, five and a half inch version, standard 2.0. So possibilities are endless, million different color schemes. I prefer to fish flies that I can see work. And, uh, obviously I cannot easily see this fly on a sunny day, on a cloudy day in stained water, in clear water, whatever, uh, whites, chartreuse, grays, tans, light olives, all flies that I really like to, to fish. If I can stand up and watch my clients work a fly like this and quickly scan from the front angler to the back angler and, and keep an eye on that fly, I feel that I will catch more fish than if I had two flies on that I couldn't see. So I can keep their um, presentation uh, proper and I can keep an eye on the fly uh, because by the time they're eating this, it's 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 really a visual thing. And uh, if you've ever spent the day with me during peak season uh, when I'm guiding, I'm standing up the whole time. I'm watching. Uh, I rarely sit down. I sit down for lunch. So 
um, swing a D 2.0 and uh, get ready. We're going to, we're going to knock out another one here. So 2.0 is done. If you guys have questions, send them our way. Corey will relay them to me and we will answer them to the best of our knowledge. All right. Couple larger versions of this fly. This one here. This is the 45. This is as, as big as I'll throw for smallmouth. I really don't think there's any any reason to go any bigger, but it sure is a heck of a lot of fun in the spring when our rivers are really swollen. Super, super big flows, off color. Um, you can swim this big thing around and 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 get some pretty savage eats. Um, people ask, you know, what are you fishing for for something like that? I'll tell you the truth. 14 inch fish will eat this. 12 inch fish will eat this. A 20 inch fish will eat this. Uh, smallmouth are pretty mean, and and when the temperatures are right, and the flows are right, and the conditions are right, you put this in their area. And uh, it's it's something's gonna die, and it's it's not gonna be the smallmouth. They're gonna eat this. Um, so the 45 was built out of necessity to get deeper. So um, bigger platform. I usually try to find a very narrow, the most narrow and elongated head that I can find in my uh, in my packs. This is a small. This is also a small. Look at the just slight difference in size, but really it's the difference in how narrow this is and how long it is versus this one, how short, and this has came out of the same pack. So um, these are all hand shaped um, at the factory. This isn't something that's popped out of a mold. So if you find a head shape that you like, then you wanna definitely note that and uh, try to source the heads accordingly. Um, what you'll also find, not only the shape of the head and the length of the heads, you'll find different thicknesses of the collar. So if the collar is super thin and it presses in and it's soft, it's not gonna have as much kick and, and, and jive and, and movement to it as it would if it had the stiffer collar. So um, I like that, that, that broader collar, but with the bigger fly, I like it longer in the head. So we, we always say a uh, uh, nose like a Smithwick Rogue. If you look at those old jerk baits, very narrow, um, you know, uh, shape to them. Pointy nose gets you that kick back and forth, but it also gives you um, a lot of times the, the 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 short fat ones have more foam and uh, they don't sink as well. So a fly of this size, when I beef up the rear hook, when I put a a, a, ra a lead wrap here, or I even go to something like a uh, tungsten, these hairline scud bodies they're tungsten and you put that right on the bend of the hook like so and you wrap your thread over top of that and lock that in so that's your keel and that's going to be about as heavy as i'll go um would be this tungsten tungsten keel now you have to be careful if you if you weight the fly too much it won't swim as good. So the more weight you add to it, the more bogged down it's going to get. Um, the longer the leader, the more it's going to swim and kick and whatnot. So people always ask, can you fish this on a sink tip? Sure, you can fish it on a sink tip. Um, but just like Tommy Lynch does when he fishes his triple Ds on the big waters, he's lengthening his leader. So it gives you that more banjo kick and minnow effect versus a short leash is going to uh, restrict the amount of movement that the fly has. A sink tip is going to restrict the amount of movement that the fly has. It's almost damp it's dampening uh, the action of the fly. So again, we're fishing this on an intermediate. Uh, you're, either, you're either wrapping um, it with lead or you're using that scud keel that I showed you. Uh, very rarely, if ever, do I ever fish one this big without some sort of keel. And I'm going to beef up the beef up the hook as well. So let's do the same thing we did on the second one when it comes to the tail. We're just going to go a little bit longer. So the D45 
comes from the size of shanks. So you're using a 15 millimeter in the rear, then you're putting on a hook, and then you're using a 15, a 15, and then a hook, and the hook's gonna be larger, it's gonna be a 3.0. Okay, so same thread, same everything. If anybody wants to order anything, no, Jesse's still on the phone. I'll let you know when Jesse gets off the phone. But give us a call, email it in, team at schultzoutfitters.com. We'll do our best to get everything out tomorrow. Thanks for keeping us busy. So here we go. Now I'm going to go, let's go back to the flash. Let's get rid of the finesse. Let's make this dude pop and dance and looking like a disco ball down there. So take this. Now you could use any color you want. You could use the gray. I like the gray. I like the chartreuse. I like olive um, when it comes to this kind of stuff. Super simple. Just a couple wraps in there. Just kind of back wrap over it. Save yourself some space. Again, this one's just going to be a tail, so it's going to look like this. This is if you want to tie, if you're going to tie a bunch of these. Not a bad idea just to whip up some tails and get your tails ready to rock. You can sit down and knock a bunch of these out and, and build off that. But come in here, I'm gonna cut it. We'll go white. Back to the whiting American rooster. Get down in here and get some of these big feathers towards the bottom. One, and two, spread these two right next to each other. I don't like the way that one's got a hook in it. Let's get it straight. <clears throat> oh, another thing too, instead of buying packs of schloppen if you have one of these and you get down and you don't they don't have the perfect feathers these kind of rough ones down here these are great for feather game changers or the fronts so i'll use when we get to the front of this fly i'll use some of these scraggly ones that are like schlappen style i'll use those for the front of my fly and the, on the front hook and that's a good good way to use up those feathers because as you guys know if you've bought Schloppen from a fly shop, if they don't take great care in finding the best stuff available, it's pretty rough go these days, especially with certain colors. So grab a couple of these. Let's see if we can do it without the... without the flattening. One there, one here. Well, let's get a better one. I don't like that one. That one's a lot nicer. Okay. Trim these oh, do, 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 do. Little accent feathers down the side. down 
the side. Any more questions, Corey? Clear. Okay. Let's grab some natural grizzly. Couple whites. I'm gonna use three here or two. I'm gonna use a grizzly and a white. I'll just kind of repeat that all the way up and through. I do pretty well on the grizzly white combo. Wolf in, you know what? Let's go full. We're going flashy on this. Let's go uh, put a little tail flash in. Just wrap her forward here. Flex. There's a question about the current. The this flies as long as you fish it out front and there's um, resistance, either from the way the boat is being handled or the current, you're going to have current pushing on this head, and the flow is going to go over the head, and the collar is going to deflect it, and that's where you're going to get your side to side. So if this fly is fished. Off the side of the boat, it's not going to behave the same. If it's fished upstream, it's not going to behave the same. So 45 down or greater to get the maximum slashing motion to the fly. Okay? So rear is done. I need a shank. Rock, can you grab me one of those 3-0s out of here? There's somewhere over there with a pack of 3 -oh hooks. It's not that, it's the other one. Yeah, there you go. Just so it's ready. 25 shank. Cut it to length. File it down. I'm going to grab myself a hook. I'm going to use the Kona. Heavy boy. Won't bend out. Thread base. Slap that dude right down the side. Keep it tight, just like you do on the front hook. Don't want it hanging way off the back. Brushable. 
lock it in. Dry. XL cactus, two thirds of the way up. Tie it off, back wrap over top, cut it, and again, grizzly, couple whites. What you got? Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Stack them up. Two whites, one grizz. Forward. A cool little blend there. Try it off. Ballard flank, wing, find a good one here. Flex. Now we're going 15. Same thing as the 2-0. Grizzly, white, a lot of repetition with this one, just like a FGC. But faster to tie. Flex.
Another 15. Repeat. Two thirds. One white. Couple drizz. Makes a killer pike fly too. Anything that eats minnows. And you will know if you're out fishing around here this time of year. If you're messing with minnows, you're messing with teeth. So sometimes we donate these things. But most of the time, I'll give you a little tip. If you do hook a pike on them, if you hang out long enough after you do it and you row over to where the pike encounter occurred, there's a good chance that your fly is sitting on the bottom of the river right there. We retrieve more than we lose. We'll finish a little half hitch, whatever you want to do. You're going to cover it in resin anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And you are on to your front hook. Twenty five millimeter connection shank. Cut it, file it. Three O. Is this the one you handed me? No, it's right here. Wait, that looks small. There's the three O, big dog. Thread base, as we did with all three flies. Lay it right down the side. Don't go too far back. Keep it tight, reduce the chances for following. Rushable. Here's your chance now. Take a couple. Take the gray. Take the white, the pearl, put some shoulders on this guy. So you're doubling it up. No need for fancy tools, just rip it, twist it together. White chartreuse, chartreuse gray, white and olive. They all look pretty, pretty cool. Got 
got a little more room to work with on this 3-0 than you did with the two. Slightly longer, bigger gap. Now you got that nice little ball on the back that'll support your feathers. What you can do, you can come in here and grab some of these off your off your uh, rooster, American rooster. Some of these ones that you're not going to use for tail feathers are just too soft. Let's see if I can get a big. Scale kind of work. Stack them up. Same thing. Cool. Now you're onto the rattle. Get way back on that, and then you can fit in this bigger rattle, which makes a hell of a lot more noise. Set it up the same way. Loose wraps and get progressively tighter. The longer one will be a little bit harder. You got to fight with it a little bit, but it will sit up there for you. Lock it in. Get her straight. It's brushable. You can do the same thing. You can twist up a couple of different colors. Work your way through it. The, the, um, the dyed versions, the filler flash dyed versions are, you can tell the difference. And once they get in the dye, they get a little kinky and shorter. They find that pretty common when things get uh, dyed, whether it be feathers or even synthetic materials, they tend to get some shrinkage. Just gonna twist those up. Another really cool material uh, to, to tie this fly with, either the 2.0 or this version, is a material that Hairline distributes called Emulator, Bait Fish Emulator. It's a wrap. And what you can do with it is you can cut it off the, the cord, off the um, string or whatever you want to call it that's on put it into a dubbing loop little wax little dubbing spinner and you can twist up some custom colors uh, blends um it tends to have a lot less pop than this it's more of a it's uh, not quite muted but it's definitely not as loud as this uh, on a sunny day so kind of a cool product i i've done a, a bunch of them for my personal fishing and and guiding with that emulator flash uh, emulator bait fish wrap, I should say. We got some shoulders on it now. Build that up. 
And if you get too far forward, you can always come in here and just kind of scooch that rattle back and give yourself some room. It really sucks when you get to this point and the head doesn't fit. All right. So I'm going to take a mallard flank. I'm not mallard flank. I'm going to take my marabou. Pick out a winner. That one's not a winner. This one will work. In that Sims bag, is there uh, a grizzly marabou? I want to say there's right in that bag, there's a, some grizzly uh, marabou. You see it? It's in a packet. It's by Montana Fly. Cool. Thanks, man. So, this kind of stuff, if you want to go with this color scheme, you grab this barred marabou, blood quail, white and black. And you can do. Two feathers. Stick with the theme there. Instead of doing that red collar, just do two pieces of boo. You won't need as many wraps to cover. look to it. Top it with a little flash. Got the lateral. And there it is. Accent feathers down the side. Be ready to put the hat on. Pretty slick. See what I can get away with here. Not that, dropped it. That one kind of blew out. Let me get a on that one I dropped it. So it's important. Get in here and kind of hollow this out and make sure it's clean because if not, you'll, like I said earlier, you'll kind of blow through the roof sometimes here and it messes it up. That dude's going to fit. And if, you, if you're if you tight on your, on your spacing, as you can see with this one, we got so much marabou and whatnot up front, you don't even really need to put that extra collar in there if you don't want to or you don't have space like I don't on this one. So, um, not necessary, but at this point, I'm just going to tie it off, put a little thread base down so that glue's got something to grab onto. I'm 
pop around there. Get it straight. And that's the, the D45 and one of my favorite color schemes. I'll tie this with that flashy core or I'll tie it with that emulator spun up. The finesse is just a little too small when you get this big to really hold it together. So I want to keep that profile and uh, either the emulator in the, in the dub brush that you create or um, the filler flash cactus combo. If you want to tie some really big ones, we've, we've tied them even bigger than this. You can get away with the, the medium size head, a little bit bigger, beef up the hooks. And then this is just the R and D, um, bait fish brush and we get uh tie some really big ones that hold hold their shape and whatnot so didn't do a rattle on this guy but uh it was going to report for saltwater duty and then we got blown out down in louisiana but that's pretty much uh the the three styles of swinging d's that i that i fish that a lot of the guys here at the shop fish and uh, we've all had a lot of su success with them um, as you can see, there's there's several different ways to tie them, uh, different ways to keel them. If I was going to keel this one with the uh, with that scud scud um, body, I'd simply flip flip the uh, hook, grab it by the shank and the vise, and I would just take some thread, come in here and just kind of fight your way through, lay down a little thread base like so, trim it, I take that scud body, I'd lay it on there like so, this is going to be way heavier than any lead that you're going to put on there, but a fly with this much bulk and that head would be just fine, I just wrap it in, however you want to finish it. You're going to coat it with flex anyways. Just lock it in. However, I don't put a ton on there because I sometimes I want to take it off. But I'll just take this, just coat this all with flex. Now I have a tungsten keel that will sink this fly down you know no problem if you keep the rod tip down towards the water with some down swats and some hard uh hard strips sharp you can get this fly to dig and get down three four feet maybe even five feet if you know what you're doing and the rowers uh on the same page as you so it's going to be hard to fit the fly back in the vise after you put that keel on. But uh, there's your 45. So if you go through what we tied, we have the 2.0, lighter, a little bit lighter hooks, a little bit shorter. You've got the 45. And then you have the finesse. So if you guys like what you saw tonight, uh, let us know. You know, God knows how long this is going to last. So uh, we're prepared to do this as much as you guys uh, will follow along. If you're interested in more fly tying stuff, let us know. If you want us to set up some chairs and stack up some sprues and talk smallmouth and talk different subjects and, and whatnot, uh, we'd be happy to do that. Um, we're going to be sitting here grinding until they uh, tell us we can't. So shop's going to be open normal business hours. Uh, if you can't make it, simply call. Uh, we're running, um, having packages get picked up twice a day, and then we're running out a, a late uh, a late run of packages right before 5 o'clock to our local post office. So if you need anything, just holler. Um, you know, couldn't can't do this without our, our sponsors, Barflies. Uh, I think it was our 10th year this year, and uh, every year it gets better and better and better. So just wanted to 
you know, give a shout out to our sponsors that always help us out whenever we need, need anything. Um, Hairline, a uh, great company to deal with. Uh, just amazing products, great customer service. You got A-Rex Hooks has been our sponsor for the last couple of years for Barflies. Can't say enough good things about their hooks and, and uh, Morton and the boys over there just been great to us. Uh, Regal Vice. Just got to spend the day with Don and, and John from Regal on the water yesterday. James had him out today. Uh, I, I don't think you could you could deal with a better better company when it comes to uh, our industry. Just guys that'll um, you know bend over backwards and make something happen. We'll drop everything to to make sure you get what you need. So big shout out to Regal Vice, uh, Flyman, the Shanks that Blaine and and Martin and the crew over there developed have just revolutionized uh, fly tying and and totally took it in a totally different direction. So we, we can't, uh, can't do all this and, and build these crazy flies without those components. So Flyman, you guys have always been there for us. We're there for you. Uh, Dr. Slick tools, uh, second to none. They make some amazing tools. Uh, Aqua flies, they, they sponsor us for all of our um, swung fly type classes, shanks, crazy flies. Some of the most clean production flies you'll ever find is from Aqua flies, Montana fly company, their materials, uh, when it comes to feathers and marabou, barred stuff, uh, crazy rubber legs, translucent fibers, just just a great company to deal with. You've got our distribution that uh, handles all the brushes, get imported in and distributed to shops. So a lot of the stuff that Blaine uses, the polar fiber, the bait fish, the translucy, all that stuff's coming out of uh, Florida. Big thank you to Lily and Matt Grasky uh, for help, helping us with that. And then VitaVoo. We're making some cool uh, American-made uh, vice uh, tools and, and bags and, and different things that they've uh, teamed up with uh, Renzetti and they've teamed up with Regal over the years to make some cool stuff. So uh, shout out to Scott and those guys. Uh, if you guys have questions, simply email them over to team at SchultzOutfitters.com. Uh, hit me up on Instagram at Schultz Outfitters, Facebook, Messenger, uh, directly to the shop or to me personally, and we'll do our best to to get back with you uh, as soon as possible. Um, things will be somewhat back to normal at the shop tomorrow. We won't be scrambling to put on events like we've been doing for the last week. So uh, if you need something, myself, Carter, Jesse, Corey, Senyo, we'll all be here tomorrow holding it down. Colton and James will be on the water chasing smallies. But uh, again, just thank you guys so much for supporting us and uh, staying uh, you know, with us through these hard times. So if you guys need anything, Fly uh, tying material sale goes through Friday. Free shipping on all orders over 19 bucks, And uh, all fly tying materials until Friday at 6 o'clock are 19% off. Um, so uh, stock up. Dig your heels in. Take care of your families. Be safe out there. Again, thanks to our sponsors and thanks to you guys for tuning in. Send us comments. Let us know what you want us to do. We will uh, we'll be here. And uh, we're not going to sit around and do nothing. So. Grind to shine. Thank you much. So faithful. Two hours, five minutes. Yeehaw.